Yo, what's up guys? Yeah, Pokey Game here with a discussion video of sorts. Uh, this video was actually inspired by a video that I came across from NJMP. Uh, it was a pretty funny video. It's part of his NJMP shorts playlist, but I can't actually play it because I'm not trying to get no copyright out here. Uh, well, I mean, I can play it, but I'm, I can't put the song. But I thought it was really funny, and the video was if Lanner's T was uh, banned from Smoke on OU. And while it was funny, it did have a lot of truth to it. So... I wanted to discuss this. Uh, big shout out to my boy NJMP, of course. I'll leave the link to the video down below. And I wanted to see uh, your guys' thoughts on if Landorus Theory Form was banned. So first off, let's talk about why Landorus would be banned or why this Pokemon is always brought up. Let's look at the recent, and I say quote unquote recent because this is about a month ago. We're still waiting on the new tier changes. But as of usage stats, Landorus is at almost 50% usage. That means that half the teams that you play in OU um, after uh, a certain point, fifty percent of them have Landorus Therium form. Why? Well, a bunch of reasons. Big one is Landorus is just such a splashable Pokemon. Intimidate, uh, being able to come in on physical attackers and naturally checking them, naturally checking them whether you are offensive or defensive is a pretty big one. Um, obviously, having a decent speed tier, uh, great attack, and um, a great move set. Right? Landorus has is one of the best Stealth Rockers because it's easily able to pressure. Uh, stealth Rockers, or Pokemon that stop Stealth Rockers, right? One of them would be Mega Sableye. Landers can threaten it with a Swords Dance Z move and then get a Stealth Rock on it. Same thing with uh, Skarmory. It can constantly crush through that. It has Knock Off, uh, U-Turn for Utility, can function as a Scarf user, can function as uh, a Z user, can function as a Defensive Pivot. Rocky Helmet is so splashable, right? Uh, on this Pokemon. Leftovers can work. You can run Toxic. It checks Zygarde and whatnot. It's just one of the best ground types ever, and it has been ever since it's been released. If we go back, uh, um, if we go back to Black and White One, uh, Terrakion pretty much ran the meta, right? Uh, you jumped the Choice Band Terrakion on your team, you got a kill. It didn't matter what your skill level was, you got a kill. Um, and in that sense, I want to say once Landorus was actually put into uh, fifth gen, right, in Black and White Two then that changed. You weren't just able to put Terraki on your team and just win, uh, put Garchomp on your team and just win, although Garchomp was uh, banned at a point and then you know came back with Rough Skin and whatnot. Uh, that was more so with the Sand Veil ban. But you weren't able just to put them on your team and just win because you have this defensive pivot that can take all hits from it. You have this Pokemon that can uh, just naturally check Pokemon like Garchomp, Gliscor, opposing landers with only HP ice. Like one of the best checks to landers is opposing landers because it can switch in on most of its moves and threaten it with HP ice, right? So we've already established and we all know landers is a great Pokemon. It has so many good moves. And I think, uh, and th this is just me trying to understand the general public and not the people that all play by Smogon, but. Also, trying to understand the casual player, right? When they hop on, uh, when when they hop on Pokemon Showdown and they just see Pokemon, yeah, I was about to say PO Pokemon Showdown, they just see Landorus on every other team, and that's not an exaggeration. Based on the usage stats, that is true. You will see Landorus on every other team because it is uh, on 50% of teams. I'm just trying to understand like why they want to ban and. In order to understand that as well, we need to see what makes a Pokemon, you know, broken. What makes a Pokemon uh, banned from OU? And I think one of the closest ones that I can have to Landers, uh, when it comes to a Pokemon that is so good at doing everything that it does, is Aegislash, right? Aegislash is a Pokemon like Landorus that they don't do the same thing, right? Uh, but they are so good at multiple things, and they're just able to excel at that, right? Age Slash can run Subtoxic. Age Slash can run a Sword Dance set. It can run a Shadow Ball set with King Shield. It can run HP Ice. It can beat Gliscor. Uh, during the X and Y early meta, uh, there was an abundance of Spadef Gliscor because it was a set that can run in. It could taunt Age Slash and it could potentially beat it. Uh, Mandibuzz also rose in usage at one point during early X Y, uh, and at that point, like. You know, Age Slash started running sub toxic and that allowed it to beat Mandibuzz 1v1. Age Slash is the Pokemon that is just so good at what it does. And, you know, uh, I want to compare it because, much like Landorus, it is ridiculously good at what it does. But Age Slash, of course, the big thing for that is it can change back and forth between forms with uh, stance change between this 150 defense, 150 special defense to the 150 offensive presence of Ashley Age Slash. And then Age Slash which was, you know, allowed earlier this generation was, of course, Quick Bam. 
Um, and a lot of that has to do with the uncompetitiveness of the 50-50s between King Shield, right? If you're in a situation where um, like you you have a higher chance to lose because your opponent can use King Shield or you use the example of Shadow Tag, right? Or Arena Trap, right? You're usually in the higher advantage versus your opponent and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, so Landers in that sense isn't the same because uh, while Landers is amazing at what it does, it doesn't promote uh, uncompetitive play, I want to say, because I don't just say, oh man, my opponent has a Landers, this is unfair, man, what can I do? I don't know what set he is. I mean, I, I do do that, but there are answers to it, right? You have Fizz Def Celestila, which rose up in usage, which can deal with Z-Move, with Z-Fly, but of course, even then, Landers adapted and ran SmackDown. Um, so, there's a lot of stuff going for, uh, for Landers and obviously against it. And another mod I want to compare it to, again, this is just me talking, so feel free to have a discussion, and then we'll talk about how the meta will be when it actually gets banned. I'm leading up to that, um, but it's not going to get banned. This is just my opinion on things and what I see from it. Uh, I want to compare it to GSC Snorlax. So uh, that would be Gen 2 OU, by the way. Uh, so GSC uh, OU Snorlax is the best Pokemon ever. Uh, it is ridiculously splashable. Uh, it can be a belly drum user, curse user, it can run lovely kiss in that generation, did get a lovely kiss. Um, wait a second. That was by event though, does that mean we have lovely kiss Snorlax now? No, because that was by event. Okay, just making sure. I didn't, I was just checking. But it's not broken because you can deal with it. It is ridiculously good and probably the most used mon in the tier, right, in the generation. But it's not broken. So it's over centralizing but not busted because it doesn't promote unfair play uh it's just not you have outs to it right it is over centralizing in the tier meaning it is everywhere you will see it on all your teams or most teams if not all teams and it is exceptionally good at what it does but there are outs to it and same thing with landerus right um if you're running choice scarf you're locked up into moves and if you're running choice scarf then uh, teams with more fatter teams like uh, Celestial, Tangrowth, Pex, although, though uh, in Tangrowth case, it kind of did fall in usage. Uh, it does less, right? Whereas defensive isn't as good versus offense because offense can run like Specs or HP Ice, Tapu Koko uh, to a KO that boy. Um, though it can obviously switch in on Tapu Koko once, right? So, um, but versus balance, Landers excels. Defensive Landers excels. Uh, versus some sorts of offense is also pretty good versus as well. And obviously, it's not just this Pokemon you have. It's teammates on top of that uh, that help take it up. But th this is going down to basic Pokemon, right? You don't have one Pokemon when you play. You have multiple. But Landers isn't the type of Pokemon that, uh, because it's on your team, again, uh, to say my point again, you don't fear that, uh, feel that there is some unfair advantage once you find out what type of landers it is which you more than likely will pretty early on in the game because like i said landers is one of those pokemon you can just throw out there your opponent has a physical attacker you can expect or you have a physical attacker you can expect their landers to come in let's say you have a mega scissor you go for u-turn landers comes in you take a rocky helmet bam it's defensive landers already found out maybe he has hp fire maybe he has hp ice more than likely hp ice um or you don't see an item on it, uh, it or you, like you send out Coco, they send out Landers, Intimidate goes before Let's Terrain, bam, it's Choice Scarf, right? So it's not like a mod that is so hard to find out what type it, uh, what set it's running, uh, and like I, I, I don't want to compare that to like something like, like Protein Grand, right? You don't know it's set, but it's, it's not like that at all because you are able to figure out what type of set Landorus is, and generally pretty early on in a game. I've never seen a late game Landorus. Like, I've seen a late game Rock Polish sweep on Landorus, all right? When I when I don't see a Z move, and when I find out that it's not, when I don't see an item, and I find out it's not Scarf, I automatically think Z, so I keep in my mind, okay, this could be Rock Polish, this could be SD, but if I see Stealth Rock and I don't see an item, uh, chances are you can eliminate Rock Posh, but it might be Stealth Rock, Swords Dance, Fly MZ, Earthquake, right? But Landorus, typically it gives away uh, it's set relatively early on in the game because that's the type of Pokemon Landers is. It's a Pokemon that can come in, take hits, get out of there, depending on the set, of course. Uh, if you see it on Aurora Veil, vale, it might be a more offensive variant, but even then, it's typically a stealth rocker on Aurora Veil vale teams. So, what would the meta be like without this Pokemon? We talked about how Landers is splashable on like every single team, right? So, let's look through the OU meta game and talk about physical offensive mods that would love Landers being gone. The first one is Charizard X. 
50% of teams have landers. With no landers, Dragon Edge Charizard X could actually be a set again. I'm not saying it's not a good set, it's just not as good as the set that's actually running around now, and that would be Flare Blitz, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Roost. Now, this set is the best set right now because it breaks the defensive cores of Celesteel and Toxpex, especially because Toxpex has to run specially defensive. Um, and it also allows the user to um, chip away at the opposing landers as opposed to setting up the plus one and then dying to Earthquake while getting off like 70% on landers, right? That's a lot of ways uh, people use um, Charizard. So this Pokemon would absolutely love landers being gone. Again, the most splashable Pokemon with Intimidate, which naturally checks Zardex being gone, would make Zardex even better. And if Zardex comes back, we would see um, a rise in Pokemon, Choice Scarf Pokemon that are faster that could actually deal with it. So the first one we'd see would be Garchomp. That's another Pokemon, by the way, that would appreciate the, uh, I would appreciate Landers being gone. But the first one we would see is Garchomp, right? Choice Scarf Garchomp would definitely rise in usage because it's a Pokemon that can check a plus one Charizard. And you best believe Dragon Edge Charizard would rise if Landorus was gone. Because besides Landorus, uh, besides Landorus, the best ground types to deal with Charizard X would be a Poudon, another Pokemon we'd see a rise on teams, and Quagsire. But uh, these would be defensively, these would be the ground types that rise because Landorus is gone, right? But even then, Hippowdon doesn't take it as well because it, while Hippowdon is bulkier stats-wise, uh, Hippowdon doesn't take it as well because... Landers has Intimidate, Hippowdon doesn't, uh, though Lander, uh, Hippowdon obviously has Slack Off Recovery, right? And Quagsire has Unaware, so it doesn't care about the setup, and it has Recover. So uh, these will be two defensive answers that would rise because of Charizard, right? Like, there's no question. These are two defensive answers that would rise. I mean, Quagsire can always be used on any team anyway. Uh, that boy is all the way down in the tiers, but it does the same thing in every single tier. Uh, so those would be two that rise. Offensively, it would be Garchomp. Uh, let's keep going through the list a little bit. Um... Besides that, you probably see Scarf Latios even more, though it's probably one of the main Scarfers right now. And uh, I want to say maybe some variants of a defensive Tyranitar. You know how with Naga Nadell running around, we had an Assault Vest Tyranitar running around, right? But now you might see a more defensive variant of Tyranitar to be able to deal with Charizard at plus one and knock it out with Rock Slide. So that's something we would see. Uh, the thing is, though, Hippowdon and Quagsire both don't like this Pokemon. And... I say that because, oh, also uh, Gliscor. Let's put Gliscor as, I'm not trying to nickname you as Gliscor, but let's put Gliscor as another uh, defensive ground type that would also have to rise in usage. Now, the reason Gliscor would also rise is because these, well, one, it can defog with Poison Heal, which is amazing. Uh, so it'd be a defogger, you can get up Stealth Rock as Poison Heal Recovery, or Roost Reliable Recovery. But the reason these two hate Coco is because Coco has Grass Knot, and it, without, uh, without Landers running around, the only need for HP Ice is Garchomp, Gliscor, and Zygarde, but Coco can run a set like this. Uh, Volt Switch or Thunderbolt. That boy can, doesn't even have to care about running Volt Switch. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna run Volt Switch now. It doesn't even have to run, I mean, they ran it before as well, but some people would run U-Turn as well, uh, just because Landers, it doesn't even have to worry about Landers coming in, uh, because it doesn't lose anything. Like, it can run like this with like, uh, it can run like a Ferium Z. Obviously, it can still run Life Orb as well to be able to deal with Hippowdon and Quagsire. Uh, but Graphs Knight, I believe, is something that we would see in Coco for sure because with this set, it deals with every mod. HP Ice was just there because, again, uh, having that 100% out to uh, having that 100% out to Landers, and of course, as well as hitting Zygarde and whatnot, right? You still see Electrium Z, Wild Charge, and whatnot, but I definitely see an increase in uh, Grass Knot Tabu Coco rising. I know earlier on the meta, when a paddle was being used, Grass Knot Tabu Coco was also being used uh, as well. So these two, if you're that, Coco will get two out of uh, out of there. Um, you have Marowak is another one, right? Like Marowak, oh, that's not it's not supposed to be Totem, but you know what? Totem has Rockhead, so whatever. Uh, Marowak is another one that would rise. Uh, you're not having a Pokemon that could switch into Flare Blitz 
uh, and get the recoil off on it and actually check it, Trick Room Teens would be ridiculous, right? Trick Room Teens already run Marowak Crawdon as it is, and typically uh, more balanced type teams, they pivot in on, on Landris on Marowak. And granted, you know, Shadow Bone doesn't touch the uh, Rocky Helmet anyway, but you definitely see an increase in this Pokemon because it would be ridiculously hard to switch into. Uh, I think you'd see this Pokemon on more teams than just the Trick Room variants that it's being ran on right now, currently in OU. Because uh, the last time I saw Marowak Alolan form on a team that wasn't Trick Room was like pre-Pokebank map, before Pokebank come out. So that would be things we would see. But setup sweepers like Charizard X, and I think Zygarde is also a big one. Uh, let's take into account Choice Band Zygarde, for example. One of the ways people deal with it is pivoting in on defensive landers. Landers actually started running like leftovers, protect toxic. That was something that I know ABR popular uh, popularized. That became a set. Uh, Tangrowth is obviously like the best switching, but between not having landers plus Tangrowth, Zygar, Choice Band, just clicks thousand arrows and two it KOs everything. Adam and thousand arrows. Uh, Stealth Rack up, defense top of Feeny. Obviously, Pharaoh's uh, Thorn isn't two it KO'd, a more Fizz deficit, and Clefable as well. But not being able to pivot on them, even Dragon Dance Zygar would be even more of a threat. So, like, the, the way physical attackers... Oh, God, imagine imagine a metagame with Metacham or Mega Mawal. Mega Mawal. Imagine these two Pokemon without having your defensive landers to at least chip away at Metacham to put it in range of maybe a, a Water Shuriken or a, an unboosted move from a Pokemon, right? Like Scarf Lottie. You want to put it in range that way you don't have to drop a Draco. So, I think that the metagame would shift to a more... Physical offense, and on top of that, Pokemon like these would rise, like way more in usage. Garchomp, Choice Scarf, uh, Swords Dance, Z. I think Fire Emblem Z would actually be ran over um, Dragonium now because Dragonium doesn't need to. Dragonium is there because plus one Dragonium knocks out Landers, right? So you wouldn't even hit that. Fire Emblem deals with Tangrowth and deals with Celestilla, as well as dealing with Scizor and Ferrothorn. So I would see like Fire Emblem rising up more uses, even Life Orb. Uh, I would run like this, like you don't even need Outrage. <laughs> You really don't even need Outrage. Um, like, I think that would be fine because Dragon Claw hits everything. Uh, of course, uh, Grounding Z could also be ran as well. But like, these are all Pokemon that would appreciate the Lanners being banned. Like, even even a Pokemon like Pinsir, for example, Pinsir would have no pivots besides Rotom would probably rise in usage again, and I guess Celestilla to an extent. Um, but yeah. It's just, uh, of course, obvious discovery, but like, I'm just on different types of teams, right? You would have to run your Rotom, you would have to run your Celesteela, you would have to run your Skarmory. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with either of those Pokemon. Like, Rotom was, uh, had super high usage last generation, right? This generation kind of fell off and now it's UU. But um, with a ban on Lanterus, you would see this increase of threats, right? And I think that would also make it so, if Landers actually was banned, I think we'd also see a lot of suspect tests on Pokemon that were once banned before, but not banned now. I'm talking about Pokemon like Mega Mawile. Mega Mawile was banned last generation, but it's not banned now. That Mon is allowed to uh, be free, and that has to do with uh, the increase in uh, the fairy types that are actually fast, like Koga, for example. Uh, Gren is still allowed in the metagame currently, so I can check it. Like Sucker Punch variant, you have Psychic Terrain to deal with that too. But like people were saying, how Psychic Terrain made Bisharp not be OU, but now you have Bisharp up in the OU tier. Uh, so it's like the metagame would shift more to a physical offensive. Not that the metagame isn't physical right now anyway. Like a ton of the Pokemon are physical besides like Coco and Gren. Obviously, I'm exaggerating because there's even more Pokemon that are physical, but you see this increase in scary physical setup mons, and it would be like if I have my Dragonish Charizard, and I know you have Garchomp in the back, and I get and you have Feral Thorn out on the field. If you don't have Thunder Wave, bro, if I just click Dragon Claw right there, I can knock out Garchomp coming in and then set up later. So it'd definitely be a lot of mind games for these setup mons, for these Choice Scarf users, and all in all, I think that Lenders is not broken. It is a great Pokemon, but there's. It, it, it's not, I've never been in a game be like, unless I'm using like a CTC team <laughs> or a team with no ground immunity, right? Uh, I, I don't want to say, like like the Dojo team, for example, like Lanners was a threat to that team because Dojo was my only Lanners switching. Other than that, like Earthquake 2, I kill everything, right? Uh, MG Dragon, I love that team though, I'm just saying, but that's just an example. Like, Lenders isn't broken in a sense. It's extremely good at what it does. It's extremely splashable on teams, but and then people complain that they see it all the time. But is that necessarily 
uh, a bad thing. Just because you see Landorus all the time doesn't mean there's not diversity in the other five. Landorus is just so good at what it does. Uh, compared to Primal Ground and Ubers. Um, we... It's on every single team, or like a ridiculous amount of teams. I think at one point it had like 90% usage or something crazy like that. Above 70%. It was like above 70% for sure. And that's because it just does so many things. It checks Pokemon, it sets up rocks, it can sweep on its own. And compare that to Landorus, right? It's good at what it does, but it's not broken. It's... It's not unbeatable. Uh, Landers is one of the best Landers checks. Like, what? It's its its own check. So, it's a great Pokemon. And uh, the metagame would obviously shift to a more physical offense. I want it, Like I said, uh, if it was gone, we'd even see a rise in Terrakion for sure. Like, Terrakion being able to click close combat. Or even just an SD constant to crush Terrakion to deal with Celestilla, Toxapex. Like, it would just knock them out because there's no Intimidate pivot. But, uh, just because it's used a lot does not make it unhealthy for the uh, meta itself, right? It's not a Pokemon like Genesec, which can boost and just win on its own. No, Landers has checks to the sets like that. So, uh, obviously, let me know your thoughts. This is me just really freeballing, so I'm sorry if I uh, either became repetitive or was ranting. That's just the type of person I am. Uh, but you can let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, goodbye, friends.